This video covers everything on Alex about volume of prisms and cylinders. If you have any question that you're working on, persevere through the whole video and you'll find it. Number one says a solid is made of cubes. Find its volume. Well, you could kind of visualize it. The top of the box is three cubes by five cubes. So there's 15 cubes showing and they're stacked up by three. So 15 by three makes 45 cubes or 45 inches cubed because each cube is one inch. So one inch by one inch by one inch. So that makes one inch cubed. So 45 inches cubed. You could also use the volume of a rectangular prism, which is the area of the base times the height. The base is three by five by three high. So it makes 45 inches cubed. Okay, on the next one, we have another rectangular prism. So I'm gonna use that same formula again, the area of the base times the height. The base is a rectangle, and we know the area of a rectangle is length times width. So that gives us the length is seven times the width four times the height of two, which is 56 yards cubed. Yard times yard times yard, yard cubed. Number three, they mixed it up. They put a fraction in to upset you. So this side, they said that each cube is a third centimeters in length. So the whole entire side is three cubes long and each one is a third centimeter. So a third times three cubes, so three over one. So each cube is one centimeters. And then the height of it's four. So four over one times a third. So that's four thirds. So the height is four thirds. And then we have the width here is two cubes times a third each. So that makes two thirds. So the volume is one times two thirds times four thirds or eight ninths. The story problem actually breaks it down though for you how to do. So it wants to know how many cubes the solid's made out of. Well, it's made out of three times two. The top you can see has six cubes and there's four layers of them. So six times four, there's 24 cubes. And then each cube is a third by a third by a third. All the sides are the same length. If this side is a third, the height is a third, and the width is also going to be a third because it's a cube. A cube has all the sides the same length, kind of like a dice that you roll in Monopoly. All the sides on a cube have the same length. So multiply across, you get 1 over 27. So the volume of the cube, which I just worked on up there to be 8 ninths, another way you can do it is the number of cubes you have, 24, times the volume of each cube, which is 1 27th. So that gives you a total of 24 over 27, which reduces to 8 ninths when you divide both numbers by 3. Number 4 is another rectangular um, prism. The area of the base times the height. The base, again, it's a rectangle, so length times width three-fourths times a seventh, and then times the height of two-fifths. So you can use your calculator. So three divided by four is how you make a fraction on the fancy calculators because it doesn't have a fraction key. Just do three divided by four times one divided by seven times two divided by five. Hit math, enter, enter. You get three over 70. Number five, if you this one comes up in Alex, you're going to have to read the explanation on it because my measurements are gonna be different than what comes out on the computer program of how long it is in inches. Number six, it says find the length of a side of a cube with a volume of 287 feet cubed. Again, a cube has all the sides the same length. So the length times the width times the height, all three sides are the same, so they're all, I'm just gonna call all of them x. So a cube has a volume of x cubed. They said the volume was 287, so solving for x, you have to do the cube root of each of them. So the cube root of 287 was 6.596, and to the nearest tenth, that's 6.6, because .6, you got to round the 5 up. Because you look to the tenth, and you look to the number to the right of it, and it was 5 or more. So that makes it 6.6. .6. Again, the cube root function on your calculator, you can either go to the math key, and if you go to the math key, it's like down about two-thirds of the way you'll find a cube root or what you can do on your calculator is to do 287 and then the caret key to the one-third it'll also give you that same answer number seven number seven has a rectangular prism that's been kicked 
It reminds me of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. If you had the Leaning Tower of Pisa and it was full of water and you gave it a kick, it still has all that same amount of water in it. It doesn't matter that it's tilting or that it's sliding along. It's still got the same volume on the inside. So you're still going to do the area of the base times the height of it. The base of it, again, is a rectangle, 7 by 3, and the height is 9, so you get 189 centimeters cubed. Okay, number 8 is having you do the surface area and the volume of the box. So surface area, again, you find the area of, I'm just going to break it down to the front and the back, just break it down by side. So the front and the back are both 12 by 2, and there's two of them. The left and the right side are both 2 by 5, and there's two of those. And then the top and the bottom, I did here in green, the top and the bottom are both 12 by 5. And again, there's two of them. Add all six sides up, you get 188. The volume of the box, again, is area of the base times the height. And the base is 12 by 5, the pencil here that I shaded in. And then times the height, 2, which gives you 120 feet cubed. Letter B wants to know how much wood does it take to make it? Well, the wood just goes on the outside surface area of it. You're not filling it. It's the amount covering the outside of it. So that's how come it's surface area. And let her see they want to fill it. If you're going to fill it with something, fill it with water or fill it with sand, that's volume. How much it holds is volume. Number nine, they made a rectangular prism um, for a candle, which what, to me was very entertaining. I've never seen a rectangular prism candle. All I've ever seen is cylinder candles. Anyway, it says each candle is 5 by 4 by 11, so the volume of one cube, the area of the base times the height, is 220. That's the total amount of wax we have, so divide the total amount of wax by each candle, and that's how many candles you've got, 27. And shocker, it came out exact. If it didn't come out exact, you'd need to round down, because you can't make part of a cube and think someone's going to pay for it. Number 10. On number 10, it says a construction crew for a new store will dig a hole that's in the shape of a rectangle for the store's foundation. The hole will be 17 yards by 14 yards by 4 yards. They want us then to figure out how much dirt's taken away in cubic feet. So they gave us the numbers in yards, and they want us to change it to feet. Well, in each yard, there's 3 feet. A yard is really long. So find a yard, stick around your house if you need to, and you can see that it's cut into three yards. So if you have it all in yards for the area of the base times the height, 17 times 14 times 4, each one of those needs to be changed to feet. Each one of those yards have three feet in it. So you need to multiply it by 3, 3, and 3, three times, and that gives you 25,704 yards cubed, which is right down here too. So each... Each truck can take away that many feet cubed, and that's how many feet cubed we have right now, 24,704. So divide that by how much each truck you can, can take. You have 82.91 trips. Well, you want all the dirt taken away, so you're going to need to round up to make it 83 trips. That's how come they round it up. And then if we're making 83 trips, and each trip is 1225, multiply it together, and that's how much it's going to cost to make all those trips. A number 11, you could cut this up either vertically or you could have gotten horizontal on it. I went vertically though. This side here is 3 in the back, so this is going to be 3, and this down here is going to be 3. The whole side was 7, so 7 take away that length of 3 leaves 4 for the other half. The height here is 5, so this is 5. That side's going to be 5 if we drew the whole thing. And this little piece here is 3, so since this is 3, the missing piece up here is 2. All right, so that's more information than you need to do to figure out the volume of both the red and the green one added together. Again, the volume of a rectangular prism is the area of the base times the height. The base on this one in red is 8 by 3. The height is 5. And then we're going to need to add to that the green box, which is 4 by the depth of 8 and then 3 high. Add up the two boxes, and you have the whole volume of 216 millimeters cubed. Again, volume's always in millimeters cubed. Number 12, you got to dice it up again. I went vertical again for how I cut it up. And I made three boxes and then added them all together. 
The box on the left here is four by seven. It's seven because the side up here is seven. So seven, seven, and down here it's gonna have to be seven too. So four by seven by a height of eight because this side was eight. If that's eight, that's gonna have to be eight. And then the box down here is eight by four deep because that was four deep by height of four. So the green one is eight by four by four. And this one is the same size as the one to the left. So again, seven by four by eight, add all three boxes together and all three of the boxes added together is 576 centimeters cubed. Oh, finally on 13, we have one that's not a rectangular prism. So exciting. So on number 13, we have a triangular prism. It's a triangular prism because the two bases, the bases of any prism are the two sides that are parallel to each other. The base of the figures are the two parallel sides and the triangles are parallel to each other. And then over here, I did a very poor job of drawing it vertically. I'm so embarrassed, I'll erase it while you watch. All right, I feel better about myself now. But you could tip it up if you wanted to and make it vertical instead of horizontal. Again, the volume is the area of the base times the height. The base is a triangle, so the length times the height or the base times the height times a half is how you find the area of a triangle. So a half of five times five is the area of that one triangle or the base. Capital B stands for the area of the base. And the area of this base is 12.5. And the height, the height goes between the two bases. And the height between the two bases was seven. So that makes 87.5 feet cubed. A number 14 is also another triangular prism. And they gave us a total when we made a whole bunch of the aquariums, a total that all of them hold are 12,672 feet. So we need to figure out how many feet cubed are in one of them. So again, the area of the base times the height. And the base I did down here, the base is a triangle. And it's a half base times height. The base of it is eight. The height of that triangle is three. Again, the base and the height of the triangle make a right angle. So the base here is eight, the height of that triangle is three, so the area of one triangle of the base is 12, and the height of it's two. So one aquarium is 24 feet cubed. We have this, many to this much total water that all the aquariums hold, divide by 24, and then shocker, it came out perfect to 528 aquariums. If it didn't come out perfect, you need to round down because you can't try to load water into an aquarium that's not totally all there. It's just gonna spill all over the floor. So that would be a rounding down problem. 15, mixing it up again, they made a cylinder, which is also a prism. The bases are parallel here that are both circles. The bases again are the two parallel sides. So the bases are both the circles, the area of the base times the height. The base is circle, which is pi r squared for the area of a circle times the height, the height goes between the two bases and that was 26. So pi times three squared times the height 26. They gave you the whole diameter was six. So half of that's the radius, which was three. You get 734.76. They said the round of the nearest whole number and that's the four and to the right of the four was a seven. So I got to round that up to a five. So it's 735 feet cubed. 16 is another kind of leaning tower of Pisa problem. They um, have an oblique cylinder. So it's the same thing as a cylinder. It's just been kicked. The whole volume is still there. The volume of it did not change at all. It's all there still. So kind of think about it like a candle. If I took a circular candle and I twisted it around, it's still all there. It's just, it's been twisted up in shape, but the volume is all still there. So again, the area of the base times the height the base is a circle. They gave us the radius this time was 2.5 on it. Let me erase the mess there so you can see it. They gave us the radius. So pi r squared times the height. And that gives you 588.75. So to the nearest whole number, again, whole number truncates it. And so to the ones place, to the left of it was a seven. So you got to round up to 500, 589. The last one, number 16, 17, is about um, a cylinder still. So again, the area of the base times the height. And the radius, it said, was 3. The height was 40. So one cylinder has a volume of 
130.4. They said we had 131 of the rods though. So we're gonna do 130.4 times 131. So all the rods came out exactly to 148 point, 148,082. All right, if you still have any questions, please get them to me soon so we can go over them further. We can do a Zoom session together. Um, good to talk to all of you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.